Watch those holes, man. Obstacle course here. Right in front of you. Hey, you said yours right in there. If you don't mind that hole. You can't, you, you can't screw up. Yeah, just dump it in there. If you start, if you'll drop yours and that hole right there. Right, yep. Just take it sticking. Just dump it over. Dump it over. Yeah, if you got good insurance, don't you? <laughs> Wherever you go, farm to your road. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yep. Excellent. Tell you what, I'm going to take that. Thank you so much for your help. Good job. Good. All right. I'm going to try to do a little better job of talking. They said they couldn't hear me last time. I don't believe the microphone's not doing much in here. So, uh, But anyway, I had a question coming in. They were asking how we hang the tobacco in the barn. If we notch it or got it on a wire or hang it over the board. So this is what we call a tobacco stick. Um, this is kind of unique to, to Western Kentucky, West Tennessee, this area. Uh, North Carolina, they prime it and they put it in big bunk bales and things like that. And you go across the country, everybody handles it a little bit different. But in, in a hundred mile radius of Hopkinsville, 99% uh, of all the tobacco is put on a stick. What we do, we put a spike on top of this stick and we, we cut the plant, we call it a knife. It kind of looks like a, a hatchet that you go camping with and we take that plant and we put it on this spike, which y'all see at the next station, and we slide it over that stick. So that stick's got six plants hanging on it, the entire plant, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we, we put it on some flat wagons, or scaffold wagons, just depending on the type of tobacco, and we bring it to the barn, and then the, the, the men are, are standing on the tiers. If you look in the barn where, we're, where the tables are set up, you can see the tiers, and there's there's a, at that barn, there's six tiers in the middle, five on the next, and four on the outside. So a man stands on every two tiers. They're four, t uh, four foot apart, four foot six apart. So just depending on, but the, but the guy on the wagon, he'll hand the stick up, and then the guy above him picks up that stick, and then he kind of rotates it like that, and he hands it to the next guy above him. So we'll, we'll stack them in there. One thing we can do, depending on the variety and, and, and the, the outside temperature and moisture and things like that we can how wide we space the sticks out for this for this dark fire tobacco we're going to space that stick out a little bit wider than we would for something like a barley tobacco or things like that that would go to a to a cigarette filler um the air cured tobacco if we were talking about what's in that barn which is the exact same plant we got it spaced out even wider so because we, we got to have that airflow around it to get it to cure where we don't have molding problems and, and, uh, and rotting problems and things like that. With the, when we fire the tobacco, we can get away with putting more sticks in the barn because we're going to use the heat to go on and get the tobacco dried down. The air cure takes six to eight weeks. The dark fire, we're going to have it done in, in 20 days, 20, you know, 24 days, something like that, just depending on. But, uh, Pretty much like we talked about outside, we, we, uh, we're going to bring these coals in. We've got a, each one of these holes is about 16, 18 foot apart. And de depending on what we're trying to do, we can adjust that. So if we really need it, if it's been raining every day, the bike is just full of moisture, full of sap, we need to get it hot, we might put a fire every 12 foot. Uh, if it's just been bone dry, like it has been here, uh, you know, we might spread them out 20 foot. Just, just depending on that. So what's going to happen, we dump these coals into these holes that we dug out. And that, that fire is going to start to expand. So today, the night or whatever, it's going to sit there and it's going to kind of smolder and, and smolder around or whatever like that. It's going to catch that wood on fire that we, that we walked through up here. When it catches that wood on fire, it's going to start to travel. And that's how we're going to adjust our temperature. It's going to, Mother Nature's going to do it for us. We can speed it up, we can slow it down. If, uh, like I said, this tobacco is really ripe. It's going to really look pretty tomorrow. 24 hours, it's going to, the color's going to run. Uh, the first barn we lit up, it took four days to get the color to run. So we had to keep that fire under control for four days. The way we do that, we come in here and we'll take a rake and I can rake this sawdust down on top of those coals and kind of smother that fire out. Uh, if, 
that doesn't work, we turn these sprinklers on and we wet the sawdust and we, and we try to put it, we, we, we want to we slow it down, we don't want to put it out. But that fire is going to get on those slabs underneath and it's going to start to grow. And if that fire starts to grow, it's going to go from here to that, to the next one. And when it does, we've got a whole lot more fire. So right now we've got a two foot hole that's got a fire in. In six days, we're going to have a 10 foot by 10 foot square that's got a fire in it that's burning out. So when that happens, the temperature's going to come up. Um, that's a good thing. It, it can be a good thing. It can be a negative. If, if, if it starts to get too hot and we can look at that tobacco, and we, when you put your finger on that leaf and it, it just kind of pokes through like a piece of paper, we've cooked it, all the guts out of the tobacco. It's like overcooking a steak nothing left of it. There's no flavor, nothing. I mean, it's not, it's just an undesirable product. Nobody wants it. When we, when we get done firing, we want that tobacco to still have life in it. And we want it to have a give and it's got a little, a little elasticity to it. And when it's got that, then we, we know we've done a good job of, of curing the tobacco. Uh, anybody got any, could y'all kind of hear me down there? A little bit, my, anybody got any questions or? How often do you check it? How much tobacco in this one? It's probably about 16,000 sticks. So we, we go, it's about 800 sticks to the acre. Uh, we plant about 5,200 plants, 5,000 plants an acre. So just depending on how many, you know, it's, it's a hit or miss, but about, about uh, that's 16,000 sticks. Um, it just depends on uh, if there's a huge demand, we can, we can fill this barn up cure it, take it down, and put another crop in there. If there's not a lot of demand, we'll just fill it up one time and, and cure it out that one time. But it's, uh, uh, you get into, when you try to double crop that is what that's called. And it's a lot, it's, it's a common practice. A lot of people do it, but it gets kind of tricky the more you try to do, because the later in the season, you start looking at frost. So I've got to get this, this cut in the barn, cure it out, take it down, stripped, and then cut another crop and get it in the barn before it frosts, because if it frosts on the tobacco, it's not, it's not good. So, Do you have to rotate top to bottom? No. It's, once we put it in the barn, it's there. Um, what we try to do to keep consistency is keep that spacing. Okay. Uh, the barley tobacco, we'll put it in there six inches. This dark tobacco, we're going to put it eight to ten uh, when we're going to fire it. Uh -oh. what, we, what we can do, we got you can hear the fans running, and so we'll turn those fans on, and we'll try to draw that smoke up. And, and circulate it through the barn, uh, and we can do that on the on the first fire. And, and another thing we can do is when, when you put heat on all this green material, you're going to start to get water. And a little bit of, a little bit of water is good, but if it starts to get starts sweating, the leaves will start to, to slip off, and they'll get just get slimy. When, they, when that happens, then we got to really turn the heat up to, to try to dry it out to keep the leaves on the stalks. So, What's the average time spending a barn like this? Uh, the fire? Yes. Well, those fires will last seven to ten days. You know, and then we'll, then we'll do that twice. Okay. Yes, sir. Is there any way that you can visually gauge the temperature of the whole barn? Yeah, well, we use the several things. We've got like an indoor-outdoor thermometer. They're like, you know, when you buy it all, when you buy it at Walmart, it's got the cable on it. If we stick those probes up in the barn and got the, the, uh, the thermometer outside, and we'll... we'll one thing we have those for is for safety. So if we look at that thing and it says it's 150 degrees, it's too hot. We gotta get a water tank, cool it off so nobody gets hurt. And you can't physically come in here and break that sawdust down if it's that hot. Another thing we use is a heat gun. Like a mechanical you use on your on your car, they shoot your radiator hose and tell if you've got a problem or not. So we can take that heat gun and shoot the side of the barn and see what it is, and we come in here and shoot to the back. And we can we wanna keep it around five to 10, 10 degrees above ambient. For the first couple of days and then uh, depending on if it's august or october how fast they heat up after that how many layers up there five layers up there yep and that's a really neat when, when like i said when we go back to where the tables are if you're in there you know having a drink or smoking or, or eating or whatever you'll look up you can see all the tiers and you can kind of see how we hang it and uh, the, the tiers are they're four foot six apart vertically and they're four foot apart horizontally so that that stick will be 52 inches. So there's two inches of stick hanging on each each. We call them tiers. They run it down this, but you can kind of see. I got half the barn full, and you can see the tobacco hanging. And 
we call it shingling. So we put one, one plant, then we come down here, so it's kind of shingled like a roof, and then we start back at the top. We don't, you don't want to hang the whole top and the mix like that, because then the, the, the tails are, are, you can't get the airflow through there, so you want to kind of shingle it out to where you can get, you know, even airflow through it. So. Well, it's 16,000 sticks times six, so it'll be 96,000. I hope it's more than 800. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's 800 cigars for everybody that's in this bar. <laughs> so each, each leaf, depending on the, the growing season and things like that, uh, they'll get, you know, four to six wrappers out of one leaf, depending on it. So when we grow, when we take this tobacco down, we'll grade it. We'll make we'll see if it's got if it's got a tear on one side of the leaf or if it's got a hole in, in a leaf or maybe a bug ate it or something like that in the field if it's only on half of it we'll still grade it um if it's on both sides of the of the main stem then it won't make a grade for, for a cigar wrapper so they they want that leaf perfect no blemishes so they get more cuts out of it so what's the waste the waste a lot of it goes to chewing the bite yep so Hopkinsville, Kentucky is a really, it's a unique area, it's probably an 80 mile radius around Hopkinsville, all of the chewing tobacco in the country is right here. So uh, U.S. Tobacco, Al Tree is here, and then uh, Conwood Tobacco Company is here, so they, uh, Conwood's in Tennessee, and Al Tree is right here in Hopkinsville, and they just built up another plant, but that's what the, the lower grade, and, and they, I don't want to say lower grade, the, um, tobacco that's got a tear or a rip that's quality tobacco they can use because they're going to grind it up whereas on a cigar you don't want to give six dollars twenty dollars a hundred dollars for a cigar and have a leaf that's got a big hole where a worm ate like scratch you know, and dent tobacco pardon me scratch and dent tobacco scratch and dent tobacco that's a very good term so if, you're going, if you're going to grind it up you know you'll never know it um, but if you're going to you know you get this product that you're going to look at and they Integrity they can they can possibly get. So. Yes, sir. Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Five minutes. So about two acres? Twenty. Twenty acres. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it and it depends on, you know, if it's if it's if it's really a wet season and tobacco's really big and strutted out and it's hard to get it in the barn, we'll have to spread it out a little bit more. If it's been dry and tobacco quilted down, we can get a little bit more in there. Just, Four acres. So we'll start setting, uh, my friend, I don't know, Carrie's still here. We always start setting the, the Monday after Derby. So the Kentucky Derby is the first Monday of May every year. It's been one year it hadn't been, and the coast has missed me out, whatever. So we never got to set the box because we didn't know when to start. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I don't know, uh, and, and every farm's different. Uh, we always start the Monday after Derby if the ground is dry. If it's raining, obviously we don't. So, uh, Derby is going to be between the first and seventh of May. Uh, so that tobacco will cure or will grow in the field. Um, it normally takes about seven to eight weeks before we start. We call it topping. When that tobacco grows, it, it produces the flower. Um, people that raise tobacco for seed, they keep the flower. We want the we want the leaf, but we break the flower out of the top of the tobacco. We call it topping. We go through that. We break the break the top bud and the flower out of every plant, walk through there by hand and we, we bring them out. When we do that, we cause the plant to put all its energy towards the leaf. Um, and we're gonna do, so we'll set it first week of May, first week of July, we'll start topping. And then about the middle of August, first of the middle of August, we'll start cutting the vodka. So you kind of gauge harvesting on your topping. Um, you know, we'll, Start, probably start harvesting four weeks, five weeks after the topping, um, and that's too early. But you want, you really had, if you had the back of that was six to eight weeks or seven to eight weeks, is probably ideal. But you can't cut it all in a day because it's all made to labor. So we're gonna cut a little too early, hopefully a lot just right, and then a little too late. And that's kind of how we gauge it. But it's you know, six weeks after topping is probably the, you know, if you pick a day, it's six to seven weeks. 
Is all of the fire cured tobacco cured using the same type of wood? It's all hardwood. Okay. Hardwood and then and then hardwood sawdust. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like you don't want to burn pine in your fireplace at home. Or right. Like that. But it's it's the flavor too. And it's just like everybody's got these pellet grills and they're smoking different things. And you can get, you know, uh, cherry walnut or or, 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 or uh, blueberry hickory or what you know whatever you want to do. And and you can do some things like that in the barn. Uh, a lot of a lot of the old time they used to burn molasses and things like that to get a slicker finish on there just to kind of make that leaf look good and we'll do some some stuff like that but it's it's hardwood hardwood sawdust we're good thank, hey thank you everybody thank you